For example, when you mentioned that parallel lines don't meet, of course they could meet, and then you have defined projective geometry, and that's an entire field of Olympiad. Then people were like, why can't square root of minus one be a real thing? And then people started considering imaginary numbers. Someone might have asked, you know, why can't one plus one be zero? And that's where you get like modular arithmetic and stuff like that. Why can't a number line be a number surface, for example? These are all questions that have basically led to entire new fields of math. I think it's very important to keep pushing people to question the most basic things. I think another point in which math Olympiads differs from math at school is that math at school might teach you to work hard, but what is more important than that is how you work. And I saw in a previous interview of yours uh, that you are very hardcore about the idea of why, asking why at each step. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I think there are two parts about like asking the question why. One of them is more as just a fundamentalist way of like thinking about the sub subject mathematics, where you know when we, for example, learn how to add five-digit numbers, there's the whole process of carry forwards. And at some level, maybe you have a vague idea of why this is happening, but you often don't really stop and ask yourself that why did we add in this one on this number? And it's sort of built in from a very young age that. You shouldn't ask any questions as to like why this happened. Rather, just like there's an algorithm to do this, and you should follow it. And I think that is something I think can be really disheartening for a student who is trying to get into maths. And it's the exact opposite of what you need to do at Olympiads. For example, the origin of numbers, where you know earlier there were only like rational numbers or something, and then someone was like, okay, why can't we have square root of two as an actual number to consider? And then people start thinking of real numbers. Then people were like, "Why can't square root of minus one be a real thing?" And then people start considering imaginary numbers. Someone might have asked, you know, "Why can't one plus one be zero?" And that's where you get like modular arithmetic and stuff like that. Why can't a number line be a number circle, for example? These are all questions that have basically led to entire new fields of math. And I think it's very important to keep pushing people to. Question the most basic things because one thing is that they might learn the answers and understand where things come from, and the second thing is they might reject the answers and come up with entirely new fields of math. Alone. And do you think, or like, we need to ask the why question at every single step, even when it comes to the definition of something? So I see two ideas here: whether you ask a why at at every step, um, and you try to understand what's going on behind, which is a, a very great idea. But the other thing is that there are some ideas or concepts that we just need to accept. And sometimes the student is asking why about a definition or something which there is no why behind. And the only thing the student needs at this moment is to accept. And if the student does not get an answer to his why, he feels like he did not understand nothing. But the truth is, there is nothing to be understood. He just needs to accept it. Yeah, I think I think it is true to some extent. And Definitely, I do think that, especially at a younger age, there will be things that you need to sort of, regardless of whether you very deeply understand yet, you should be able to do because it's important to have a sort of a basic um, arithmetic skill to be able to work through your way in a lot of mathematical things. I think yeah. it's definitely true that you know there are axioms and. We can't always question an axiom, but even at that point, I think it's useful to think about why you would choose something to be the definition, why you would choose it to be an axiom, and whether it's necessarily important. For example, you know this is more of a college thing, but when you define probability, there are often three of these axioms, and one of them is like probability is at least zero, and there's a additivity of them and stuff like that. One thing I learned about recently is. You know, when you're doing something like quantum computing, the whole start of the whole field comes from the fact that you question these axioms and you get rid of one of them. And the point is that the way quantum mechanics works is that it breaks one of those basic axioms of probability, and that probabilities don't need to add up because of the wave nature or anything. And it's not very relevant as to how this happened or why this happened. But the real point is that someone decided to question what happens if you break. The most basic, obvious axiom of probability, and it has led to like a huge field of like computing. Yeah, but this might not be practical for students' learning. It might be okay for researchers to ask why about the axioms, but if you are uh, 
20 years old student or if you are starting with math olympiads sometimes you need to have to accept a starting point like for example we cannot ask why do we say that parallel lines never meet i totally agree that asking why is very important but sometimes you it might get exaggerated and it will do more harm than benefits to the student yeah i think this there should be a point where you know to accept some things for example even within olympiads there will be a lot of for example proofs which seem to have no motivation whatsoever and you know you should always stop and ask okay what was the idea behind this proof but sometimes there is no great answer sometimes the answer to this question is just like it just comes yeah there will always be these crazy moments in mathematics where you may not always have the optimal answer i think it is still useful to stop and consider the aspect of asking this question but you shouldn't stop your entire world until you get the answer for example when you mentioned that parallel lines don't meet of course they could meet and then you have defined projective geometry and that's an entire field of olympiad math so there are a lot of things that can work out but i do agree that if every definition is questioned until you can make sense out of everything you may not actually get anywhere so it's important to strike a balance